Amen. Now, guys in the band, you're going to have to be the congregation today. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't, know, I don't know if you can hear them. So, <laughs> that's Theo is saying, yeah, because yeah, we, we can't hear, well, I can't hear you, but I know you're out there listening. Um, you know, it, it's kind of a, a, an interesting season, Christmas, and if you know me, I, I, I'm, I'm going to stay up front. I don't have a Christmas message to give you right now, <laughs> but I do have a word I'm going to share with you. I believe that God is going to use to encourage you uh, in this season. You know, with all that's going on uh, in the UK, those of you who are watching in the UK, you probably appreciate some of the songs that we've been singing, you know, about we're not slaves to fear, you know, and all this stuff, because right now there, there is, there's pressure mounting right now. Uh, and, uh, you know, th- there is a sense of even fear increasing. You know, you can just feel people getting more and more concerned uh, with, you know, the situation with COVID and all of that. But, you know, we just sang it. It's one thing to sing something, and sometimes those songs need to translate. In fact, all the time, especially songs that are theologically sound and aligned with Scripture, they need to translate into a place where they become an anchor in our souls. So you want to say over yourself right now, I am not a slave to fear. And whatever that might be, it might be fear of lack, it might be fear of sickness, it might be fear of you know, another lockdown, whatever it is, say, Lord, I am not a slave to fear. And you know, the Bible talks about the righteous being planted by the riverside. In every season, we're called to flourish. Do you realize that? Like in every season, the way our spiritual DNA and our makeup is such that we are supposed to flourish regardless of the season we're in. And many Christians only find it easy when life is good and, you know, things, you know, the paycheck, you know, everything is okay, house fine, money's in the bank and all that. People feel like, well, now I'm comfortable, so everything is okay. People tend to uh, almost uh, have that almost like a goal in terms of where joy comes from. Uh, But if you know your scriptures, you know that in the midst of all the craziness that Paul went through, he was talking about joy. And so there is a whole new economy of heaven that we are exposed to because of our faith. And so in seasons like these, when there's pressure and where there's tendency in terms of the natural man to just lean into fear, lean into anxiety, lean into worry, there's a whole other economy opening up for us to step into. And this is the economy of heaven where fear doesn't exist. I mean, this type of fear that's of the enemy and cripples us, it doesn't exist. However, there's another type of fear, which is the fear of the Lord, and that's a good one. However, we are not called to live on the fear of lack and the fear of coronavirus and the fear of all these things. And so I just want to start by declaring that over us right now, that as we've been singing that, that needs to become a place in our hearts. Maybe you're watching this and um, you're not a believer. This is, what, this is one of the things that sets us apart. We don't live by the circumstances around us. We live from a whole other realm that God has made available to us. So as a believer, you watching this right now, I want to ask you, are you tapping into the resources of heaven that have been made available for you? Okay, I know you're saying, well, you're feeling these emotions. You're feeling disappointed. You're feeling all the distress. You're feeling all that. Well, I can understand that. I'm feeling a lot of that too. However, there is a place you can step into in God where the economy of heaven, the resources available to us in the spirit overrides all those emotions and all of a sudden you're functioning in a whole new place, in a whole new realm because you're not living by the external things. You're living from the internal. The Lord said, uh, uh, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. So this morning we're going to look at uh, maybe a couple of scriptures if we have time. Uh, But we're going to start with uh, Psalms, uh, uh, it's not Psalms, 1 Samuel 30. Uh, 1 Samuel 30, and I'm going to start from, let me see here, verse 6. Uh, but before I do that, I'm just going to pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word uh, that comes and brings courage and brings life and releases uh, uh, vision and releases clarity. Uh, and Father, right now, even as I speak, I ask that your word would be like a double-edged sword that just pierces into situations and brings clarity about what you're saying and that causes us to rise in boldness in this season and align ourselves with you, that we would live victorious in you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. First uh, first Samuel 30, verse 6, it says, Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. 
every man for his son and his daughter. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, please bring me the ephod here to me. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And the Lord answered him, answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them without fail and recover all. I'm going to stop there. There's another passage I'm hoping we'll get to in Ephesians in a few moments. Just a bit of background to this. You know, David uh, shows up, having been at war, shows up, and his whole family has been captured by the enemy. And he's with these guys that he's raised up, he's trained them, he's invested in them, he's pretty much made them who they are because of his leadership. And, you know, these guys... All their families, not just David's family, their family, their property, their things were captured by the enemy. And here David is in a place where, you know, things are very difficult. It says here in verse 6, David was greatly distressed. <laughs> so there is a level of distress that David was experiencing here that maybe you can relate to in this season right now. So it was not just his personal distress that, you know, he had lost property. He had lost family in this season. It's the distress of the other people around him because now he's the leader, so he's feeling the pressure. And they're not just disappointed and upset. They're speaking of stoning him. Okay, now this is a whole new level of distress because when you're in a position like some of us are in and you invest in people, you give and you sow and you pray and you meet, you know, and you do all these kind of things and, you know, maybe they leave you or they go to another congregation or another church and you hear them talking bad about you, you know, that is bad, okay? But this is another level. They're not just talking bad about David. They're thinking about killing him, the one that has actually invested so much in them. So you can appreciate that this is like an emotionally intense moment for David. And as I was just praying about what to bring today, I really feel there are many people watching right now, emotionally you're in a very unsettled place. Now, it may not be as bad as David was in, but it's something you can relate to right now. Maybe you're in a place of great distress. You see, it's not um, it's not that you're not a Christian. It's not that you're not spiritual because you're feeling distressed. Do you realize Paul was depressed at times? <laughs> you know, he was pressed on every side. Maybe you're in that, pro in that time right now where you're just feeling the disappointments of life, even the disappointments of things that God has promised or you believe God has promised has not come to pass. I want to say to you, you see, all through scriptures, there's story after story after story of people that if you would read it, and put yourself in their shoes. You can understand that whatever you're going through right now, it's not new. It's happened before. In terms of, it, it, there are people that we can look at in Scripture that have felt similar emotions and similar sense of disappointment. And I believe in this time, God wants us to draw strength for that, from that. Because... Um, this may not be the most encouraging thing to say in this moment, but listen, things are not going to get e uh, things are not going to get easier in the months ahead of us. Things are not going to get simpler. Things are going to get more and more intense. And I always go back to the scripture in the, uh, Isaiah 60 that says this: Darkness covers the earth. And great darkness, the people, but the glory of God is arising over you. And so we see a picture in here in that darkness is going to increase and is going to cover the earth. However, God is going to cause his light and his glory to also increase and cover the earth. So the two kind of uh, uh, paradigms, the two kind of realms are going to be increasing in intensity and Things are getting more and more emotional. You look at the, the news, the media, everything. things are getting more and more intense. And God is calling us to not live in a realm where we try to deny that reality. But in spite of that reality, we're thriving. We're not surviving, we're thriving. Isn't it amazing that the church always seems to grow when the church is persecuted and put down and beat and all, all the, when the enemy tries to unleash all his weapons and, and sets laws in government and all these things are going on. 
Despite all that, the church always seems to start. Do you know why? Because within your DNA is something that means you can never be put down. You see, oh, um, you know, when you're like in a, in a pool and you see those balls that, yeah, I don't know, you get like one of those balls that's got air in it. It doesn't matter how much you push it down, it's going to come back up because within it is oxygen and that cannot stay down there. That is within your spiritual DNA. You're not called to remain down there. So actually, pressure is an opportunity opportunity for that DNA that God has placed in you to shine forth. And here we see David going through intense pressure. Look at what happens here. He says, he, the men around him spoke about stoning him, and he was grieved. Every man was grieved uh, uh, for his son and, his do- and their daughters. Look at what it says next. It says, but David strengthened himself in the Lord. So, you might think, as I've done, oftentimes as I've read this passage, what does it mean David strengthened himself in the Lord? I think it's a good thing the Bible doesn't tell us what David did. <laughs> but we know whatever David did, things shifted from that moment onwards. Because you read after that, it says, Then David went on to inquire of the Lord, what do I do next? So look at this. This is really interesting. David strengthened himself in the Lord. And emotionally, something shifted in him. And then after that, he then went to pray and asked God, what do I do? So there are two different things going on here. Whatever David did to strengthen himself in the Lord might not have been necessarily inquiring of the Lord, but he definitely did inquire of the Lord after there was a shift in himself. Are are you getting me, guys? (laughs) So there's... It's two different things I'm trying to point your attention to here. Because the Bible doesn't tell us what David did. And I think that is a good thing. Because if the Bible told us what David did, we're all going to make a formula out of it. And God is not into the... It's not into the business of just giving us formulas. I've read through the Bible many times, back to back, and I haven't seen a formula as to you pray for five minutes, and then you say Thanksgiving for ten minutes, and then you do this, you pray in tongues for another ten minutes, and then you do this, and then Holy Spirit is going to show up. Or you, you fast for three days, and then you do this, and then... I, I, have you ever seen that through Scripture? It's nowhere, because God is actually in the business of cultivating relationship, leading us by his presence, not just principles. And in the generation we're living right now, people just want the preacher, Joe and Stacy, and the man of God on YouTube or wherever you're watching, to give you the five steps to success, the five steps to come out of your addiction, the three steps to... I want to say, Jesus never preached a motivational message. He didn't give us three steps to come out of this. Five steps because he was teaching us about relationship. The reason why this is important is the way I am going to strengthen myself in the Lord is probably going to be different from the way you're going to strengthen yourself in the Lord. Because God has made us as unique individuals. I can give you different stories of times where I'm depressed, where I'm, where I'm worn out, where I'm tired. And the way I felt led to find strength it was like, oh, wow, I found strength in this. And another season comes, and I tried to implement what happened in the previous season, and somehow it's not working. Maybe you felt that before. Maybe one Sunday or one morning, you're having your prayer time. You put on a worship song, and the presence of God shows up, and you're in tears. Oh, this is so powerful. You're like, wow. And then the next day, you try to play the same song. Have you noticed sometimes it doesn't happen the same way? <laughs> because he's not in the business of giving us a formula. We have to be led by his presence. And see, you need to become familiar and you need to become a student of the move of God in your life and start to understand how God works with you. There was a season in my life where for me to find strength in the Lord, I needed to go away, book a retreat, and just lay on my face in a hotel room. It wasn't a hotel room. It was like a retreat place for a whole day in silence. I know you might not believe that I'm, I'm going to go in prayer and be quiet. Literally, my prayer time in that season was just silence. I laid on my face and I was silent. I said nothing. And in all honesty, I heard nothing too. (laughs) But you know what? I came out different. And I couldn't put my finger on what was different. All I knew was I felt emotionally different. 
In another season of my life, God was pushing me in prayer in tongues. In another season of my life, He's pushing me in going deeper and spending more time in the Word. In another season of my life, He's pushing me in different areas in, in expanding how I am cultivating His presence in my life. And I'm finding that as I'm leaning into Him, He's giving me direction on how to find strength in that moment. And maybe you're watching this and you're frustrated with your personal prayer time because you're like, oh yeah, I need to pray in tongues. I need to wait on God. I need to read the Bible. I need to, I need to do that. I need to get thanksgiving. Oh yeah, I need to pray for this. And you think, which, one, which, which one do I do right now? Where do I start? Anyone feel like that? Well, I feel like that many times. I tell you what, it's leaning into the presence of God. Because the presence of God starts to bring the emphasis. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to have, sis, uh, to have a systematic approach in your devotional life. That is good. But I'm saying for me and the experiences I've had, and as I read about David strengthening himself in the Lord, and we're not being given the details, I have found that in different seasons of, season of my life, strength has come from God, but in different ways. And I've had to learn how to lean into, Lord, where am I going to draw strength from in this season right now? David had to have done this before. It it seems to me like this wasn't the first time David uh, uh, had gone through something where he had to learn how to strengthen himself. Are you going through situations right now and you're wasting those circumstances? Do you realize you can waste a circumstance in that you're going through a difficult time, but you come out and you haven't changed you haven't learned anything and your, your depth and your strength hasn't changed at all. Doesn't it say in Psalm 23, even though I walk through the valley. So the idea is you're not meant to stay in the valley. You're meant to walk through. And then when you come out on the other side, something is shifted in you. And therefore, you can encourage someone else that's just been through. But some people go through and they're not being changed. It's like provision. I see this over and over in my life. And I have to remind myself this. The moment I see God provide supernaturally, I pray, the provision comes. And I see that there is no other explanation for this provision than God has answered our prayer for provision. Because of that provision, I lose the right to doubt God the next time a situation arises because I'm learning from my history with him that when I prayed in that circumstance and I knew he was aware of that circumstance and I wasn't in those disobedience, I was in his will and all these things, I've tried to analyze that. I draw strength from that experience for the next circumstance I'm going through. I don't believe this was the first time David was having to do this. It seemed like he he'd probably he had a culture of getting himself strong. Do you have a culture? Do you have a way? of getting yourself strong in the Lord. Because I'm telling you, in the days ahead, you're going to need it. We are going to have to have a way of getting ourselves strong in the Lord. I remember my wife uh, sharing this with me uh, about um, her having bipolar. You might not know this. You know, Rebecca is an incredible worship leader. But do you know Rebecca had bipolar for four years in her teens? And it was quite intense, you know. And this is what she said. She said she learned how to worship in those years. Uh, she learned how to press into God in those years. She just go on a piano and just worship and just worship in the midst of this whole craziness she was going through. Towards the end of those four years, she got to a place where she said, well, Lord, you're probably not going to heal me anymore now. <laughs> But I'm still going to worship nonetheless. But there was a brokenness of, well, maybe this is how it's going to be for the rest of my life. Four years is a long time to go through something like that. I don't even know what bipolar feels like and to go through that. And uh, I think it was towards the end of those four years, she was at home one day. And uh, her mom was watching TV. And uh, the person on the TV started prophesying and saying, uh, there's someone watching me right now. Not you, but someone in your home is struggling with bipolar and God is healing them right now. And in that moment, it was like, Rebecca wasn't even in the room. She was in another room. And then Rebecca's mom calls her, Rebecca, you know, how are you feeling right now? She's like, oh yeah, I feel really good. And then it was like all the stuff in her just left. And she said joy just came in her. And for four months, mind you, it was four years, right? She had that. For four months straight, she was in a cloud of nothing, no, no negative emotion apart from joy for four months straight. And God radically delivered her. Now, we've been married almost 10 years. I've never seen any trace of bipolar as of day. So I know that there are times where we go through difficult circumstances. We can't explain why it seems like the season is extending, 
But when I see Rebecca worship now, it's not just coming from a place of a good voice. There is an authority that is behind the worship that other people can come into what she has won uh, and what, what she has got victory in, because the circumstances she went through, you know what gave her strength in that time? Worship. The worship was where she found strength. Now, I'm not saying to you right now that every time you go through a difficult time, worship is going to be the key. Now, I, I don't think that will be fair, because I can look at times in my life where I am going through it, and worship is not, it's not that I'm in the place of, of the flesh and not wanting to just engage in spiritual activity. It's that even though I am engaging in worship, it, it, I'm not finding strength in it. But I know for Rebecca, that's something that God has used in her life. Now, for me, there are other things that God has to use to help me to find strength. In fact, there are times where God is leading us to start to recollect all the things he has promised. And I've heard Bill Johnson talk about this many years ago, you know, where, you know, one of the ways to strengthen yourself in the Lord is to bring to remembrance the promises of God that he has spoken over your life and begin to meditate on them and begin to pray over them as well as the acts of God in your life, what God has done. And begin to remember how God provided here and how God came through here. Your personal testimony. See, this is the crazy thing. You can come to church and hear my testimony or hear Rebecca's testimony, but actually that's not going to do much for you until you start to take personal ownership and start to have that place of, uh, it's not just, you know, what they say, it's not just about who, what other people say Jesus is. It's like that whole question Jesus asked the disciples, but who do you say that I am? What is your personal revelation? In the days ahead, your personal revelation is going to be so crucial. It's time to sh make a shift from leaning on the, the pastor, you know, Joe and Stacy, leaning on their faith to get you through. It's time to make a shift from leaning on another believers. And you see, there's nothing completely wrong with that if that's where you are in your faith. But I want to say to you, God is calling you right now to learn how to strengthen yourself in the Lord because the battles ahead are even more significant and more challenging than some of the ones you face right now. Do you want to turn your Bibles to Ephesians 6? Ephesians 6. This is another well-known passage. Verse 10. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand. As I'm reading this, I want to just make a note of how many times it keeps saying stand. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand verse 14 stand therefore having girded your waist with the truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness having shod your feet with preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking on the shield of faith it goes on it goes on let's go to verse 18 it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful of, to this very end with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. I'm just going to back up a bit to verse 10. Finally, be strong. And everyone said, be strong. Be strong. See, when, G, when, when Paul wrote this and he's speaking to the church, he's saying, be strong in the Lord. This is actually a command. It's not a suggestion. It's a commandment. So, why is Paul calling the church to strength? Because they have strength within them. I know right now, you may not be feeling strong, but God expects you to be strong. And you might say, well, but the Bible says in my weakness, he's strong. Yes, when you are weak physically, there's another strength that's in you spiritually that you can tap into. This is not an excuse for you to be spiritually weak. He's talking about spiritual resources that are available to all of us. He's talking about what God has made available to us in the heavenly places. You may be feeling physically weak, even feeling infirmities and sickness 
in your body. But guess what? Your spirit is still called to be strong. You may feel physically like circumstances are opposing you emotionally. You're distressed. You're discouraged. But listen, the commandment is to be strong. So if he's calling you to do it, it means there's grace to live out that strength. And I believe God is wanting us to be Christians that are no weak. We're called to have something of strength within us. How are we? See, what's the, what's the point? What's the, diff- what's the point if there is no difference between how we are responding to the current situation in society right now to our neighbors? What's that pointing to in terms of what we receive from heaven? There has to be a clear difference that we are able to tap into what's been made available to us. You see, what the Bible says is, yeah, uh, the very spirit that raised Christ from the dead will quicken your mortal bodies. Listen, the, the worst situation you can experience is death, as in the body dies, you know. It, 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 so, Scripture has given us the worst case scenario, death. And in that worst case scenario, the Spirit of God is even able to raise the dead. So, if your situation has not hit that, listen, you have to learn that the resources in the Spirit is more than enough to shift your emotions, to shift your body, and to cause there to be a total reordering of circumstances. Now, the challenge is when you're in a situation where things are so heavy upon you, in those moments, you you might forget that you have spiritual resources available to you right then and then. And I want to say to us believers, we need to learn that these resources are available to us right here, right now. It is within your spirit. But you have to do something about it. You don't have to wait for the pastor to pray for you. Now, I know if we're in a service right now, we'll probably have a prayer time. People come forth for prayer. And I'm not against that. But I believe God has called us into the ministry of DIY. Do it yourself. (laughs) Nothing wrong with a pastor praying for you, but... God wants you to grow. See, let me give you my, my test. I used to, it wasn't regular, it wasn't every day, but there was a time where I would be having these, this, this uh, what's it called, this uh, cloud of depression. So heavy that it's like, I don't want to see anyone, I don't want to be anywhere, I just want to lock myself up and just, you know, I just not see anything, you know, a dark room or whatever. <laughs> just, just be away from anything. And in those times, I was still serving, even in ministry. In fact, I remember one of those times where, you know, it's like I had to lead, I had to lead a prayer meeting while I'm depressed myself. <laughs> and I'm in prayer meeting, Lord, I don't want to be here right now. And in those moments, see, there are times where God would send people to me, and they would just come and pray for me. And it was like, the, it, it was a demonic thing because it broke after the prayer or broke. And there will be times where those things will shift. And then after a while, I realized God stopped sending people to me. And you know why? <laughs> because like, James, it's a DIY time. <laughs> it's time for you to learn how to tap into the strength that's already within you, James. And then begin to release that. And the, when I started doing that on a regular basis, taking authority over things over myself, that is why I can come to a prayer meeting now and take authority over things I'm saying in people. With confidence and boldness because I have learned it the DIY way. I've done it for myself. Not that it's my own ability, but I've tapped into the resources of heaven. And I've, I've captured that strength so now I can release it in other situations. And this is how God's going to raise this one. One of the ways in which God's going to raise up his army, why is, why is it that one of our key prophetic words as a church is about an army of the young, an army of the young being raised up. An army to me speaks of equipment. It speaks of strength. It speaks of stamina. It speaks of inner fortitude. And so as a church in this season, I am calling you. This is not the time to buckle under the pressure because of Sky News and BBC News and all this stuff. Now, I'm, I'm praying we don't have another lockdown. But even if we did, listen, all things work together for the good of them that love God. And whatever the enemy wants to release in this season, the DNA, our spiritual DNA is we're going to overcome. See, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like that ball that they're trying to suppress under the pool. It's always going to come up. We are going to come up better, not bitter. We're going to come up victorious, not victims. This is the time for us to realize the resource 
resources of heaven are available to us. Maybe you're watching right now and you're thinking, oh yeah, I'm not a Christian, oh, I, but I, and I, this doesn't really make much sense. It's not going to make much sense to you until you engage with the Spirit of God. We are called to be people that do the natural supernaturally. And then we're called to do the supernatural naturally. So the things, you see, when it says in, uh, in Isaiah, those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up wings like eagles. They would walk and not be weary. Think about it. In the natural, you cannot walk and not be weary. As in, it doesn't matter how, how crazy your, your kind of stamina is as, as an Olympic athlete. If you're going to walk and you're going to walk forever, at some point... You're going to wear out in strength. But this is what the scripture says. Those who receive strength from the Lord, they would walk and never, never go weary. That is not natural. That is supernatural. And the only reason why that's possible is because of supernatural resources empowering your natural abilities. So I know you're parenting right now. You're stuck in the home with kids. You're thinking how you're going. There is resource available from heaven. See, I'm a parent talking about that right now. And you see, you might be in your marriage. You might be having fights. You might be having disagreements. You might be having struggles. Listen, there is resources from heaven available for you. You might be going through a financial challenge. You might be worried about how you're going to get through next month. I tell you, even 2021, there are times I thought to myself, how am I going to get through tomorrow? And at the end of the day, I'm like, wow, that was amazing, actually. Listen, there's resources available for you. It's like you have a heavenly bank account, and the Lord has put deposits in there, and you're in here, and you're broke, and you're not realizing you have the codes to access that account. It's within your spirit. Now, the access point may look different for you than it does for me. However, it's going to be something where we engage with God. God may say to you, you need to clear out your diary and just spend time with him in that day. He may call you to spend two hours, one hour, 30 minutes, the whole day, a whole few days, a retreat, whatever, or a systematic way of engaging with him. Find some promises. It might be getting worship on. It might be praying in tongues for extended times. It might be waiting on. I don't know what it is. You have to find the thing that the Spirit starts to emphasize to you right now as a way to find strength. Regardless of what the avenue the Lord emphasizes for you, the end result is you're called to be strong. So don't sit on the couch feeling sorry for yourself. Sit on the couch thinking, what's all this lockdown stuff again? And all this stuff they're saying in the news, oh, God, help us. Oh, I can't do this. I can't. Don't just stay in that realm. Say, Lord, how can I receive strength in this season? Because it is in your DNA to be strong. God does not expect you to be a weakling, a spiritual weakling. He's put it in you to be an overcomer. In fact, he says you're more than an overcomer. You're more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens you on the inside. Ephesians says that we will be strengthened with might in the inner man. See, that's where the strength comes in. Once you're feeling it on the inside, forget about anything else. I mean, there's some prayer meetings I go into. It's like, my goodness, I just feel such a strength. I, maybe, maybe I'm, I might have gone in. Let me just be honest with you. There's some prayer meetings I go in and I come out depressed as well. So. <laughs> But then there's some I go in, and like you just feel just a diffusion. The situation hasn't changed, but my inner emotional state has changed. Therefore, I'm able to uh, confront the situation differently. And you see, I'm not here just preaching your sermon. In all honesty, I didn't have a sermon until I got here. <laughs> <laughs> and we're having our prayer meeting. I was like, okay, Lord, what do you have to say? Because this is my life right now, I'm telling you. God has called you to live from a place of inner strength. You're not called to be a weakling. You're not called. Hey, guys. So sorry about that. Uh, I think we just had a power cut and things just went strange at the very end of my preach. So I do apologize for that. So what I'm going to do right now is just give you the final point and then just pray over you. Uh, to finish. I was already at the end of, of that short teaching anyway. Uh, what I really feel the Lord is wanting to do in this season is to remind us that we're called to live from that place of inner strength. And you've got those re the resources of heaven available to you in this season. And he, the Lord wants you to tap into those resources. And I'm reminded of the scripture that says the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. I want to remind you that God actually cares about your emotions. Some people think God is not bothered by how you feel. He doesn't want you to live from your emotions in a way where you don't pray, you don't worship, you don't read the word, you don't spend time with God because you don't feel like it. He's not called you to be like that. He's wanting you to live by faith. You're called to live by faith, not by emotions, not by sight. However, having said that, 
The Bible says the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. In other words, think about it. Peace and joy are not just spiritual things. They actually affect your emotions. You can't tell me you've got peace and it's not clear in your emotional state. You can't tell me you've got joy and it's not evident. I mean, I, I don't know if you've been to those meetings where it's like, well, I'm thinking of myself speaking. Maybe if you're a leader and you're, you're speaking to meetings where, you know, people are like, they tell you they were excited about the word, but when you look across the congregation, you're like, are you sure you were excited? Are you sure that was stirring you? Because you didn't somehow notify your face because your face looks quite depressed and looks quite bored. So you can't tell me you've got joy and you've got all that going on the inside and it's not evident in your emotions. The kingdom of God affects your emotions. And all that to say, God is concerned about you having peace, having joy, walking in faith, but it starts within you. So I want to pray over you in this season that you will find the place of strength in the Lord and you would get alone with God and actually dig into that and allow that well that's already within you to become that river that begins to just flow out of you and that you begin to do the supernatural naturally and the natural supernaturally. Let me pray over you. Father, thank you so much for Ram Church. Thank you for everyone watching right now. Those who have been just through this year, the previous year, these difficult seasons we've been through as a nation and even the whole world. Father, I thank you that you've called us to be a whole new breed of people on the earth right now. So Father, where the well within us have been clogged up by disappointment, by fear, by lack of faith, by distractions, Lord, I'm asking that even right now, you begin to remove all those blockages and that they will become that release from within us in this season. Father, where there's been a blockage in our ability to hear from you or receive revelations, insights that will cause us to live victoriously in this season. Lord, we say let the blockages be removed, let our ears be open, let our hearts be open to receive from heaven in this season. So I want to pray for you right now. I release strength over you, that you will in this season be strengthened with might in the inner man. That the spirit of fear does not have a stronghold or a foothold in your heart or emotions. But the love of God that surpasses all understanding becomes the reality of your emotions and your mind and your heart. That you will be in perfect peace as your mind is stayed on the Lord. I bless you with that right now in Jesus' name. God bless you and have an amazing Christmas and a happy new year.